Welcome to 8.7 day one. We're going to learn how to factor special cases. Our goal is that we can factor perfect square trinomials as well as the difference of two squares. Now I'd like to make sure that you guys know that today's lesson is related to section 8.4. So if you want to write that down, it's actually the reverse order of section 8.4. So today we are going to be given a trinomial and we'll need to factor, whereas in section 8.4 we were given the two sets of parentheses and we needed to figure out what the trinomial was. So first of all, let's look at the key concept box. We're first going to focus on factoring perfect square trinomials. So there's two different cases, and I believe that you have to, you might have to write these down in your notes. Um, otherwise they might already be there. So let's take a look at the first one, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That can be factored as a plus b times itself, which is just a plus b squared. Now if there was a, a, a negative sign involved, then we would have a squared minus 2b, 2ab plus b squared. The only difference would be that it's, there's a minus in front of the parentheses or in, in between the parentheses. So we have a minus b times itself, which is just a minus b squared. Now what's going to make a little bit more sense are these examples right here. So look at this first example. We have x squared plus 8x plus 16. What you can do is write x squared and then leave a blank and then 4 squared. What you do is you just take the x and the 4 and just put them in parentheses and square them. So the middle term is kind of just uh, left alone because technically you can double 4 times x. That's how you get the 8x in the middle. So you have to make sure that works. Now let's take a look at another one. 4n squared can be written as 2n quantity squared and 9 squared can be written as 3 squared. So let's make sure that we can multiply right here 2 times 2n times 3. Let's make sure that works. Yes, it does. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So it works. So basically what you do is you take the 2n and you take the 3, you put um, subtraction sign in the middle and you square it. Now these are shortcut methods like I showed you in section 8.4. Again, if you don't like the shortcut method, if you can't grasp it right now, you can feel free to use the X method that we've been using the past couple sections. There's a few blanks that you want to fill in about perfect square trinomials. Um, this will help you. The first and the last terms are perfect squares. So, you know, we've talked about this before. Perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, etc. Remember, it's just 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, etc. It goes on. So that's what I mean by the first and the last terms are perfect squares. And also, the middle term is always twice the product of the first factor and the last factor. So twice the product, which means multiplying, the first term and the last term. Let's look at our example one. What is the factored form of x squared minus 12x plus 36? I'm going to show you the shortcut method that we just talked about and then also show you the x method. You could choose which one you like better. We're going to rewrite the trinomial. And now I want to rewrite it with squaring the n terms. So x squared and 6 squared gives us 36. Now the middle, there's definitely a minus set involved, 2 times whatever's in the parentheses, the x and the 6. So it can be written in this form. So that means what you do is you just take the x, take the minus sign, and take the 6. So x minus 6 and square it. And that is the factored form of the given trinomial. Now, just in case you did not follow the shortcut method, we'll, I'll show you the x method now, just in case you'd like to see that. So, like we learned in the past couple sections, you draw an x, 
you take the last term, put it up top, take the middle term, put it in the bottom, and now we have to figure out what numbers do we multiply to get positive 36 but add to get negative 12. First thing I think of is that they both must be negative in order to multiply to get a positive but add to get a negative. So now factors of 36 would be 1 and 36, um, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Now they all need to be negative in order to multiply to get a positive. So now just add them. So this is negative 37, negative 20, negative 15, that's a negative 12 right there, um, negative 13, and negative 12, and we found our winner. So negative 6, negative 6 work. So you take that and you put them in the parentheses, and last thing is, oh, they're the same thing. So you can write x minus 6 squared. So you can choose which method you like better. Okay, example two. Here's an application problem about computer screens. Digital images are composed of thousands of tiny pixels rendered as squares as shown. Suppose the area of a pixel is 4x squared plus 30x plus 25. What is the length of one side of the pixel? Well, first thing we know is that they're squares. They told us that. So that means if it's a square, the sides are equal. That hel that's helpful. Now, you can use the shortcut method or you can use the slide divide bottoms up. That will take a little bit longer, but I'll show you both. So we need to factor this trinomial. So I'd like to use the shortcut first. What you do is you figure out what squared gives you 4x squared, and that's 2x squared. And what squared gives you 25, that's 5. And you take the 2x and the 5, and you square it together. Now, just to make sure it works, 2 times 2x times 5. That does give us 30. It gives us 20 in the middle. That problem, actually, I just noticed the book put it wrong, so it's supposed to be a 20 there. So please correct that in your notes. Um, so yes, it does give us 20x in the middle, and this is the factored form, so the side length would be just 2x plus 5, because it's only asking for one of them. Now I'll show you the slide divide method, just in case you're not catching the shortcut. And we actually learned this in the previous section, section 8.6. So, first thing that you want to do is slide the 4 over and multiply. So we get x squared plus 20x plus 100. Draw your x, put the 100 up top and the 20 on bottom. What numbers multiply to get 100 but add to get 20? The numbers that work are 10 and 10, because when you multiply, you get 100, but when you add, you get 20. So take those 10s and put them after the x's. Now we want to divide by the number that we were sliding. So divide by 4 and reduce. So that will be 5 over 2, 5 over 2. Bottoms up, last step, put the 2 in front. And we'll get 2x plus 5 times itself, which is just... 2x plus 5 quantity squared. And there you have it. We got the same answer using two different methods. You can choose which one works best for you. And that is the stopping point for day one material of 8.7. Feel free to re rewind, pause, anything like that, and also try the lesson check for today. And last reminder for you, make sure you did 8.6 day two lesson check. Have a good day.